You know, if we think back a, a number of years, go back a few decades, nothing quite matched the pride, prestige, inspiration brought to our country by Neil Armstrong landing and then walking on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's back when NASA had the right stuff, when we pushed the boundaries of science and space. NASA did it again with the space shuttle. But today, a private company showed them up once again. Elon Musk's SpaceX launched their Starship, the largest and most powerful rocket to ever lift off and head to the heavens. It's an engineering feat. It's a technological feat, and it's a nod toward private industry now succeeding where government has largely failed. At least it was for the first four minutes of flight till the Starship blew up. Well, if you're just joining us, Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly or a rud during ascent. But now this was a development test. This is the first test flight of Starship. And the goal was to gather the data and, as we said, clear the pad and get ready to go again. So you never know exactly what's going to happen. But as we promised, excitement is guaranteed. And to be fair, it was really exciting. Forget for a second the rapid, unscheduled disassembly spin that puts SpaceX commentator on par with Baghdad Bob. Nevertheless, he had a real point. SpaceX are the ones actually doing something, anything. They've sent astronauts to the ISS. Their rockets power Starlink, which is changing warfare around the world, changing the world, really, to bring the Internet worldwide. They just launched a rocket far bigger than the Saturn V, and NASA is still not where it was in the 1970s. With us now, Jordan Bim, space historian at the University of Chicago. Boy, I, I, I don't know what it says now that Elon Musk, a private businessman from South Africa, has re replaced Neil Armstrong at the forefront of, of innovation and of progress. Well, Neil Armstrong wasn't uh, the driver of progress at NASA, of course. It was the teams of engineers and leadership at NASA, which, of course, was founded under uh, President Dwight Eisenhower back in 1958 to take on the Soviet Union in the space race. Things are different now. We don't have the sort of sense of national urgency driving our space program that there was back in the 1960s during the space race. We are now in an age of transition between the large national uh, agencies left over from the Cold War towards these smaller private companies like SpaceX that are willing to take more risks when it comes to research and development, which is what we saw today. We saw a different design philosophy. Uh, last year in November, we saw NASA successfully launch its space launch system. Uh, a rocket it developed on a very slow, very careful design philosophy called linear design. Uh, what we saw today was an example of iterative design, when you're willing to take risks along the way and learn from those failures. Uh, so these are two very different approaches to doing space, uh, but each one has its mm. value. What we're seeing is public-private partnerships, and of course, NASA's return to the moon will involve SpaceX. The Starship that we saw today will be made into a variant called the Human Landing System that will carry NASA astronauts and a Canadian Space Agency astronaut, Jeremy Hansen, to the surface of the moon. Yeah, what I, what I just can't figure out, though, is you've got NASA proposed budget for 2024 of $27.2 billion way more uh, in one year than SpaceX, I think, has raised over its entire uh, history. Um, 16 missions uh, from SpaceX. Uh, NASA hasn't spent, sent people into space since 2011. I, I, I'm trying to understand the justification for NASA to even exist anymore if, as you point out, uh, the best they can do is partner with SpaceX. 
Well, the answer there is that we're, we're only talking about the human space flight side of things as well. NASA as an organization, of course, is legally mandated to do lots of different things beyond human space flight. That's robotic space science, like we've seen with NASA's new space telescope that is showing us amazing images of the very early universe and lots of different exoplanets yeah. and even some things in our own solar system. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.